Hey guys, so you just watched the steps that I took to render down my fat of choice. So I had lard from pigs in one of these crock pots and in the other crock pot I had tallow, which is the fat from a beef. What I use both of these for, I use them kind of differently. So the lard, uh, a lot of times I use just to cook with. I like to keep uh, mason jars full. I'll keep the one on my counter that I'm using and I will keep the rest of the jars in my fridge and they will keep for like up to a year in the fridge. So that way I'm using like natural animal products and not some like plant derivative to cook with. I don't like to use cooking oils. Um, I'll use olive oil once in a while, but my main things that I cook with are lard and butter. I also use my lard in baking recipes, so like in my bread, if I don't have butter that's soft on hand, um, I will use lard instead, or I just substitute it in all of my recipes. If it calls for oil, I just use lard, and it always turns out great. The only thing I wouldn't really use it on is a dessert that didn't have a flavoring. Like if it was just supposed to be vanilla, I probably wouldn't use lard. Because sometimes there is kind of a porky flavor, but in most things you cannot taste it at all. And then as far as my tallow, I have been making tallow soaps. So I've been making um, a tallow and milk recipe, which is really fun because I get to use two of the things that I grow here on the farm as well as a tallow balm recipe. So I've only made a couple variations, but I'm working on more and I wanna put them up on my website pretty soon. The first of the tallow balms that I've made is like a muscle balm. So it's in my tallow balms, the only ingredients are tallow and essential oil. So in my muscle balm recipe, the essential oils that I use are peppermint and eucalyptus. And then I made like an all over balm, but I've been using it on my face and I've really liked the results. Um, but I put a blend of essential oils in there. Like I wanted it to smell like bright citrusy is like my, I like that smell. So I think I used bergamot, bergamot. I don't know how to say that. Um, which smells kind of like lime, and then I used orange and lemongrass, I believe. Lemongrass? Yeah. <laughs> and then I also have added helichrysum essential oil. It's really good for um, aging skin. So I've been really liking using tallow in my skin products. I'm trying to, I've got it almost completely. Uh, I don't put anything on my skin that's not natural, except the one thing that I cannot substitute yet, I have not found a good substitution, is hair products because I don't just have wash and wear hair, okay? I gotta do stuff with this. And so that's harder for me to replace. But um, in all other ways, I've been trying to change the what I put on my skin because I think it, that it's really important. Um, because your skin is your biggest organ. Whatever you're putting on it, your skin is absorbing. And so we all just need to be conscious of that. Tallow in particular is antimicrobial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory. On top of those things, it actually has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. Um, I have to look it up on my phone because I can't remember that off the top of my head. But... Uh, beef tallow contains the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, which are only found in animal products and are necessary for health. So instead of, um, when you get older, when you're younger, you don't think about skin care, or at least I didn't, and I felt like most people didn't because, but then you get older and you notice changes in your skin and you're like, oh gosh, I need to do something about that. So I've been really thinking about, um, skincare products and I wanted to go the natural way instead of all these synthetic things that they try to sell you to put on your skin. Your skin is going to age regardless. Um, age is a blessing. I've been trying, this is what I'm telling myself, my mantra. Okay, don't buy into the like, uh, preserve, basically we're in an age of like trying to preserve the way that you look. But I think and I've been trying to tell myself this, that every day you get is kind of like a blessing that you get to be here. And so age is like, being able to age is a blessing. 
not everybody gets to be the ripe age of however old you are. Um, so I'm trying to take that in stride and embrace the changes because there are some, but also like beauty isn't everything. Beauty is fleeting. No one's going to be beautiful forever. Everybody's going to turn into a wrinkly sack of bones one of these days. And so I'm just trying to age gracefully. So I will show you how I make my tallow balm. And if you don't want to make it, um, I'm going to link my website in the description of this. And uh, keep checking back because I'm going to try to add some tallow balm and I will be able to ship it. Um, I'm trying to add it to my website for I'm sale. I'm sure to get new vitamins. Hunter's getting in the cabinet to get his vitamins. <laughs> Okay, so after your tallow has rendered down, so everything that was gonna melt inside of your crock pot has melted, you'll be left with a few pieces, a few solids, um, and that's perfectly normal, but just leave them in the bottom, or I filter mine into a mason jar with a just like a cheesecloth on top. And so that filters out all the chunks and leaves you with the tallow in the bottom. I actually ran out of all my cheesecloth uh, making cheese. <laughs> so I am just going to try to use a milk filter. Um, a coffee filter might work too though. I hope this works. I just stuck it inside one of my big mesh things. But now I need a funnel, so BRB. I like to use wide mouth jars for this because... Nothing is more irritating than touching the side of it with my hand or my spoon. I don't, it's like a texture thing. I don't like it. Um, so I love wide mouth jars. And this just makes it easier to get all of it out when you're nearing the bottom. So all I'm going to do is take my ladle and I'll kind of point it down, but you won't be able to see my face. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to ladle it out. The chunks are really at the bottom. So I won't have to worry about that. Okay, it's working beautifully. You can see it as I spill it coming through. I honestly probably left it on too long. I felt it wasn't done. This is like the biggest batch I've ever made. Um, so it took longer than I'm used to and I fell asleep. And then I woke up at 2.30 in the morning <laughs> and remembered that I had my lard and tallow in the crock pots and I went and I turned it off. <laughs> uh, things that you have to do sometimes. It's gonna be this golden color, and, but it's going to cool all the way and it'll be white when you're done. So the story, this actually wasn't my pork or beef. But I have done it with my pork and my beef, but I ran out. <laughs> I contacted my local processor. Um, we actually know him personally, so that really helps. And it's kind of like a young guy our age. Um, so that feels fun. Like, we're real adults now. We all have businesses and stuff. <laughs> anyway. Um, and he was more than happy to give me... Um, this pork and beef. Now, he would have rendered it for me, but then I would have had to pay some for it because they're using their equipment and their labor is watching the render, the pot render. So, I just took it in its raw form and I rendered it myself. So, if you are not in the position to have, you know, a beef or some pork on your property this year, but you would still like to have all the benefits, of the animal fat, I would contact your processor because there's not a whole lot that they do with these um, byproducts. And so when they're processing a lot of animals, they actually have to pay um, some kind of company to come to, to take their scraps. So probably they're going to be more than happy to give you some and see it going to, um, to good use instead of to waste. So once your tallow has cooled, it will solidify. I take my tallow. I don't measure it. I know what this measurement is because when I did my last batch of tallow, I weighed them out on my kitchen scale because soap, you have to be like precise. And so I had measured this out for soap, um, but not so much on the balm recipe. 
So all I'm gonna do is melt this down so that it's all liquid. Like you don't have to get it super hot, just melt it so that it's liquefied. And then after it has liquefied, you just set it aside and let it semi harden. So it's kind of like goopy, but not hard. And then I'm just gonna whip it with my um, handheld mixer. And that's it, just whipped tallow balm. And then from there, I put it into my jar of choice or canister or wherever you're gonna put it. And then you add your essential oils at that point so that you can make multiple jars of different scents. But you could scent the whole thing while it was in here. Um, you just wouldn't be able to make separate Be sure ones. to get these bites. Now that our tallow has melted, let me show you. Looks like that. I'm just gonna set it aside and it'll take about an hour-ish to cool down to the right temperature and I'll show you what it looks like in that form and then we'll whip it. My tallow has thickened. Um, do your kids ever take your stuff? Cause mine do. Um, I saw Hunter playing with the other one of these yesterday and now it's gone. So hopefully I can whip this with one beater. Oh yeah, it's gonna work. So I just whipped it with the, um, with my little kitchen beater for a minute or two until it became like a fluffy, creamy consistency. And <laughs> I just smelled that. At this point, you can put it into your jars. I didn't even get any jars, hold on. I like to use these cutie little jelly jars. This is a four ounce, this is an eight ounce. So for eight ounces, you need 100 drops of essential oil. For four, that would be 50 ounces. And I was really surprised. I mean, this doesn't have a very strong smell, but it is kind of beefy smelling. Uh, but with the addition of the essential oils, you can't, you don't smell like beef at all. I've been slathering this all over my body and not once has anybody told me I smelled like a steak. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to make a little one. My daughter Evelyn is 10 and a half. So she's turning into a little lady. So um, she has been liking like skincare products. She's been sneaking my calendula lotion. Um, so I'm gonna make her kind of, and she kind of has sensitive skin on her face. So I'm gonna make her a lavender chamomile in this one. And this bigger jar, I'm not sure yet. I'm just going to put the tallow into my little jar. And just in that little time, it's already kind of hardening up. So if it does that, you can heat it back up either like in a water bath on the stove or in the microwave um, to get it slightly thinner so that you can mix all of the essential oil in. Okay. I've warmed it up a little bit so that it's a better consistency, but I just take these skewers. That's what I'm going to use to stir it all up. I will add my essential oil. So for someone who has sensitive skin, lavender and chamomile are very soothing. This combination is also good for uh, like children and babies. So if you're someone who has a child that deals with eczema or diaper rash or rashes of any kind, this would be really good. It's really healing for the skin and gentle. It doesn't have any like preservatives, chemicals, any of that stuff that's gonna further irritate your skin. It only has. You could also, if you're someone that has super sensitive skin, you could leave all of the essential oils out. Like I said, it doesn't, it's not a super smelling. You might smell it at first, a hint of a beefy smell, but when it dries, it, um, it's, it dries clear. All you have to do is let this cool and then you're going to cap it and put it away and it will keep um, it will keep on your counter, especially in these little jars. It's not going to go bad, but you use so little 
like just a, the littlest bit is all that you need it's super moisturizing it's so good for your skin um, let me know if you try this at home I lost my caps or like I said in the near future I'm going to be adding this to my website and I'll link that in the description uh, so you should go check it out well I have a feeling I need to go open up the greenhouse so I, I think this is where I'm gonna leave you guys for the day Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.